Are you thinking about learning Python but not sure where to start? I'm Justin Dennison, edutainer at IT Pro TV. In this episode of How to Get Started in IT, I'm going to tell you five steps to learning Python. Step one, you need to figure out your motivation. I'm not talking about someone's telling you to do this or you think it's just a good idea because the money's great. You need to know, hey, why am I motivated? Are you doing data analysis for your business? Do you like building games? Or do you just want to know more about programming so you can build those nice little Internet of Things projects? This is the first thing you really need to dive into and figure out for yourself what is motivating me to learn programming. Step two, the basics. This is kind of the, the dull and drab things that you have to go through whenever you're learning a new language and a process of thinking. You're like, well, I already, I don't want to do this. It's boring. Yeah, we all did this when we learned our own language, mine being English, right? What is a verb, a noun, a, a predicate, all these things. You're going to do that in Python. And in order to get really the most out of it, you need to learn the syntax, uh, certain programmatic structures, the for, the while, the if, the else, all those fun things, but also certain data structures, the list, the set, the dictionary, the string, the integer, the float. You need to get those down. And once you do, you're ready to move on. Step three. Well, this is where uh, kind of rubber meets the road. You're going to dive into these first projects. Now, these first projects may be lead projects where you're following along a tutorial or you're building something very simple that you saw in a book or you're just trying to reproduce. Don't make these too complicated. The goal is not to build Facebook or a social network or, you know, Quake or anything like that from the ground up. This is just to see how the basics that we've learned are applied into a situations where Hey, I want to build a game. I want to do some data analysis. I want to see those visualizations. I want to make this little robot move about the room. These first projects are paramount for developing our understanding. Step four, you need to own a project. What do I mean by own a project? Well, you ever had those ideas where you go, I wonder if, or maybe I, you have an idea for a project. You need to start small, but something of your own design. You're going to design it. What problem is it solving? And then you're going to apply the new skills that you've learned in Python to solve that problem. Do be aware, you're going to get frustrated. Ah. You're going to run into some roadblocks. Wait a minute! And maybe the project doesn't come out quite like you expected it to. That's why you need to make sure you keep it very narrow and learn. It's more about building to learn than building something for a business or for, uh, you know, publication, so to speak. So. Start with those small ideas and then move forward. Step five, progressive overload. What do I mean by progressive overload? Well, you, you have your own projects. You've went through those first projects. You, you feel pretty good about the basics. But you know what? There's these, there's this, there's a little bit just beyond your, your context of understanding. Like, how do decorators work? Well, how do the classes work? I need to start building projects or interacting with little snippets of code that challenge me put me just a little bit uncomfortable, or maybe I'm extending my own project, right? I'm adding a new feature that, that made me work a little bit harder. Not too much to where you're like, ah, whatever, I'm not going to do this anymore, but just enough to, to make you, you think a little bit harder, try something, and when you are successful, because you will be if you, as long as you have that grit, you need to step back and go, what have I learned from this little added extra, this new feature, this new data structure, this new part of Python standard library that I've learned in adding new parts to my visualization, doing further data analysis, or adding two robots to run around the room. Now just utilize those five tips and you'll be able to tackle most any project you want to using Python. If you have any additional tips for someone getting started with Python, leave them in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Justin Dennison and thanks for watching this episode of How to Get Started in IT.